So we're here in, uh, in Tel Aviv at your place door. Uh, you're from Scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us something more about uh, what it is? So Scenario is a fully distributed and decentralized social platform. Um, we have a technology that allows us to create any type of application in a way that's completely decentralized, meaning it doesn't have to rely on any sort of central server or central authority. And uh, the first application or the first layer that we build on top of it is this um, social platform that allows anyone to have a profile and identity and even reputation in uh, this decentralized setting. Okay, and, and, and uh, why is it necessary to build a decentralized version of already existing central uh, owned and, uh, and uh, organized platforms? Well, we're, we're really changing the, the paradigm um, of, of the internet right now and going to a uh, decentralized version of, of um, social applications and other types of applications. And this is because the, the current paradigm is a bit flawed or, uh, or a, a bit is putting it mildly. Um, it's a sort of a perversion of the way that the internet was uh, created to be. Originally, if you wanted to go online and chat with people or, or present something to the world, you had your own server, you had your own small island on the internet and you could connect directly with other people and share information and talk about whatever you wanted. You could be as private or as anonymous as you wanted to be. But nowadays, uh, we all rely on um, very few uh, set of services that have just taken over all of the means of communications, they host all of our data, they know um, everything we put out there, uh, they have uh, continued and direct access to, and they mediate any type of interaction that we have with anyone else on the internet. And this has a few major disadvantages of the, the way that the internet was, was built to be and, and the way that the decentralized paradigm now offers. Uh, so one main thing is about privacy, it's about being able to present the type of identity that you want to, to the rest of the network that you engage in and <coughs> this is just something that right now you, you, you don't really have the option to because there's always someone who knows exactly who you are and who you're talking to and so on. In a decentralized paradigm when you connect peer to peer, when you connect directly with the people that you engage with then you don't have this issue anymore. So, so that's, that's just one benefit, the benefit of privacy, but once, once you go decentralized, you also have the benefit of not having any external entity uh, holding all of the data that you upload to, to a cloud or to some, to some service. It's all hosted on a network that's more similar to the way that BitTorrent works. So when you upload a picture, it's hosted on your computer and on your peers' computers, right? And then there's no, there's no one place when you can you know, click the off switch and then it, it's gone from the net. And you're the only one who has permissions to, 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 um, to, to take it to, or to, to give this permission to someone else. Um, so, so that's another major benefit. Generally, the fact that there's no one point of, uh, of failure in a network, there's no one place where you can shut off the server or just go to the server and read off the information, that's another major benefit. So there's no one place for, for the government or for any NSA type agency to go and just read the logs off of a hard drive, right? They, they don't have any sort of Mark Zuckerberg to, to, knock, um, uh, to knock on the door of and ask for all of the records of the network, right? Just because there's no one place where they're held. <coughs> so, so these are the, the major benefits and one thing that Scenario is offering that's um, sort of a paradigm change that right now we're the only one that are offering is that when you, um, when you contribute to the network in some way, when you upload something that people appreciate, when you publish any sort of content that, that people uh, value, then you are the direct beneficiary of that appreciation that value, whatever, whatever form it takes, whether a monetary value or value of reputation on, on the network. And that's, that's again a, a direct symptom of the fact that you don't have any sort of intermediary anymore that just takes off, takes this value off of the interactions between the peers on the network. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and where the study came from? Uh, uh, because uh, how long are you now all busy with uh, 
with, with this uh, platform or, or, this, or this project? So the, the technological platform has been in development for five years and we believe that it's the most advanced one on the market right now. And the social platform that we started building on top of it has been, has been in creation for about a year and a half now. And so the, 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 the social platform is, is, is just one of the, 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 the things uh, that you can build on, on uh, the, on the, the technology. technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, we, we went with uh, a social application first because we think it's um, the foundation of any type of application you would want to build in a, in a distributed manner. And I like giving the example of uh, creating a decentralized version of Uber. So Uber as a centralized platform give you, or let's say the main service they give you is vetting the drivers before they allow them to start working. Right? So they have a sort of um, a stand in for reputation mechanism. And in a decentralized network, you have to have an identity and you have to have some measure of, of reputation because otherwise you would never trust someone to just come and pick you up, so mm -hmm. that they not pick up your daughter, right? So <coughs> in a decentralized setting like that, if you're a new driver and you want to offer your services, then someone who um, has the option of choosing from a few drivers um, you know, we, we generally want to only go with someone who already has reputation in the network, but you know, if you can afford, um, you know, if you have a few friends together, and suddenly if you want to enjoy the, the loyal fee that someone with other reputation has at first, then you won't mind going with that person. And when he, when he accumulates a few rights like that, then he already have a reputation as a driver attached to his identity on the network, right? Yeah. And, and so this is, this is one way where we can just completely make redundant um, a centralized authority like, like Uber, but without losing the one benefit that they give to the network, which is betting out drivers. Yeah, yes, so, so what you're doing is now with the social network, you're building on it, and uh, that's also the basic of the next steps, and it's also the, 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 the identity of the people which you can use from different other uh, uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, uh, so, so, so uh, uh, and 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 who is we? Uh, because we're now at your at your house here in in in, in, uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, so everybody can uh, can see. So my my main partner and co-founder is uh, Lucius Gregory Meredith. He lives in Seattle. Generally, we are very decentralized um, uh, project as well. Yeah, why not? We, are, we are live in different parts of the world. Uh, he used to be an executive in Microsoft, uh, very high up, worked there for many years, and, and the prototype of the, of the technology was actually created by him when he was in Microsoft. But he was, let's just, let's just say, disappointed with the lack of vision, and he left Microsoft to develop uh, the next generation of the technology by himself. That's yeah. what he's been doing for a few years now. And how did you find uh, each other, and, and also the other people who were working on, the, on it? Um, Basically, we found uh, um, we found each other because when um, when I wanted to start creating this um, this decentralized social platform, this extra layer on top of uh, the decentralized technologies that have been emerging, I I just called the network for any type of technology that would fit. Um, I had some technological background my, myself, and I thought I would just have to like, take a package from here, take a line of code from there, and then just time together into something. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I found Greg and what, what he's done, then it was very clear that the technology that he's already developed he is uh, like two or three generations ahead of anything that, that existed out there. And this is something that people are beginning to, to appreciate. We're, we're already in contact with a few of the major uh, projects happening in the space. Most notably, uh, we're now working with Ethereum, which I'm sure you've heard of, uh, and Greg is actively leading the uh, design and specification of the new proof of, proof of stake protocol, okay. the consensus protocol that uh, would underline the blockchain. Okay. And this is all being done on top of, of scenario technology, what Greg um, uh, called special K. Uh, yeah, that's the secret sauce we have at, at the base of the scenario network. Okay, cool. And and um, and where are you right now? Uh, because because uh, which okay, uh, we've got uh, some problems uh, when you get the. Uh, Difference between centralized and decentralized. Uh, uh, it, it's it's about privacy and, and identity. Mm -hmm. It's it's also about stability uh, because uh, decentralized you can just shut it off or you have to shut the entire internet off. Mm -hmm. So there are the the, the, the two main uh, and and what about ownership? 
What about ownership? Yeah. Well, uh, th there's no one to own anything on the network besides the person who created it. Right? So that's, that's um, as you say, that's a major part of having this decentralized paradigm. When I upload a picture, when I upload content, I'm the only one who has the rights to determine who gets to see it. And if I have to be compensated uh, for, for someone to consume it, right? it's, it's all my decision. Right? Um, th there's no one else who has any access to it unless I permit it. Yeah. Okay, and and uh, and uh, and more about scenario uh, because the, uh, uh, can you tell something more about it and also uh, uh, some more about the blocks where it's on build. So, so, so what are the items uh, that in the uh, in, in the solution? Uh, can you rephrase the question? No, and can you not, uh, also also uh, tell something more about scenario about okay uh, uh, what it is we uh, we we now talked about but. Specifically, what are the ingredients of, of Sneera? Because you also said about something about uh, a, 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 a own currency mm. uh, and these kind of things. So, so right now, um, and I, I should preface by saying that in about two months from now, we're going to release our first public application. What we have is the basic, uh, uh, of course, aside from the technological platform, the, the fully distributed and decentralized stack that's already working, um, we have the first social application, uh, which is the one that's going to be released very soon. And it has essentially all of the basic functionality of a social network, what you would expect to have. Like you could post updates and you could share them. You can tip the person who, who shared it using your uh, cryptocurrency, which you, we should probably talk about for a bit. And you have profiles, you can create groups, you have a very elaborate system of tagging. Um, like everything you, you would expect from a standard social network. But basically right now we're, we're uh, working on creating um, a proper user experience for it, like um, a well-designed user interface. And, and that's the first step. Um, and, um, and so one of the major benefits that uh, this network has is the attention and reputation economy model that we've designed for, for this system. And that's, that's what, what's responsible for routing the information on the decentralized network um, without having to have this, this eye in the sky, this authority that knows exactly who's talking to whom, who's connected with who, and what makes sense in terms of like, how, how to uh, prioritize your feed, for example. Yeah. So on, on our network, every node has this basic intelligence, it knows how to prioritize information coming in based on based on the view that it has just on the nodes on it, and how to out the information out, how to send it out to maximize its reputation. Right? So it's it's this game where you want to um, um, expand your influence on a network, and of course in specific parts of the network, like you could be um, almost a nobody in, in a group about football, but you'll be one of the most influential people in uh, a group about Bitcoin, right? So um, you have you have this mechanism that uh, values the attention of different users based on different topics differently. And once we also create some more applications on top of that, they will be able to interface directly into that system and also prioritize the, the types of notifications and updates that they send to you based on your interest in them and based on what your friends care about. And, and so on. Um, so that's that's one thing that's almost a requirement in a, in a network like that, right? And, and um, of course, it's clear how this connects to the, the Uber example we gave earlier, right? I mean, um, once you have this um, this identity on the network, you have an established reputation. You have all sorts of uh, uh, existing standings in all sorts of applications and groups and communities. Right? You, you, that's what you can present to the world when you want to provide any sort of service, whether Uber or when selling something on the market or when providing uh, services for um, uh, as a freelancer, which is uh, an application that we have that's already been built on top of the technology. That's um, a, one of our main partners called Livegig. Then you want to have this standing. You want to have this persona that's on the network and that you can show as, uh, as a part of your um, um, motivation to, to present your, um, your standing, your, your, um, you know, your reputation in the community. And you want people to trust you. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. And, and, and can you also uh, uh, import the already existing reputation data or metrics uh, from R? 
uh, websites because uh, now uh, if you start you was it was out from scratch it was possible to to make it a, a little bit faster and uh, use uh, make use of some existing uh, data yeah um, we we want to allow users to import as much data as possible from existing networks so we would really like to allow anyone to import all of their history, including the posts and videos and pictures from Facebook and from Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and anything, any, any type of information they want to get from the centralized uh, existing um, services, then you know, we, we want to help liberate your information from them right? and, and to get, them, get it to a point where you own it. Yeah. And so any type of information we can use about your existing social structure and about, um, you know, what or all of the history that's been accumulated on the internet for the past, um, you know, 10, 15 years since, since social networking started, we want to help you get it to this new paradigm, to a decentralized system. And we'll also be able to, let's say, uh, 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 link your uh, Airbnb recommendations uh, t uh, to uh, to the system. So that's that's one thing we we'll, um, initially will have to rely on centralized systems for. If uh, of course, if, if the application wants to wants to do that with the aim of eventually transferring everything slowly to, to the distributed system, right? So let's say someone creates an Airbnb-like application on top of Signario, then initially uh, someone with no standing, no reputation, will just link to Airbnb or will link to, uh, I mean, there are other types of applications like that, just to provide, um, you know, the basic standing, which is something that you already do right now. Like for example, um, uh, when you make an account on Couchsurfing, right, you want to link to some profiles on other networks just so people see that you're a real person. Yeah. Right? So it's going to be the same uh, with us at first, with any application built um, using this technology at first, but uh, the difference is that um, when you upload new information, when you create your identity on this paradigm, on the scenario network, then it's yours. And if you want to migrate it to a new, uh, new application, then it's, it's one click away. Right? It's not like Airbnb where you have to link to them and trust mm -hmm. them to keep showing it and maybe you know maybe they want to ban you at some point or their business model fails and the site shuts down, right? This time the information belongs to you and you can migrate it, any part of it, to any different application. It's it's yours to do with as you wish. Cool. And and is it also uh, um, and, and, and is it also saves on your own computer or, or, or uh, where's the data being stored? So that, that's part of, uh, of the beauty of the technology that we have. It's saved on your computer, but it's also saved in a redundant way on the, the computers of the peers on the network. So again, it's very similar to how BitTorrent works, but with every piece of information. Right? You, you, um, you upload a picture, a picture to the network and it's spread across the, the friends you have on the network. Right? And then if, if that picture, let's say it's, it's a meme, right? it's a picture that you created, and you, you're in Tel Aviv, and suddenly uh, it's exposed to someone who lives in, in Holland, right? then uh, it, it finds suddenly some following in Holland, like a few people in the social network around that person start liking it, start commenti commenting, on, commenting on it, then the, the, uh, the system will know to start caching the picture on the computers locally. Right? So, so it's sensitive, the, the system is sensitive to where the information is being accessed from. Right? And so that's, that's very similar to what happens right now at the level of your internet service provider or the level of the service. Right? Like for example, Google has service servers everywhere. Right? Mm -hmm. they, want to, they want to give you uh, uh, the fastest service possible. They don't want you to go to their main databases in the US every time. So similarly, um, the, the network will know how to add the information to the peers on the network. And so we, we are creating this sort of distributed cloud where everything is hosted on people's machines, right? And just pulled from various sources, like in BitTorrent, when you want to get this picture, get the video, get the music file, get whatever. And like uh, when people from countries uh, where there are not, uh, not so many computers are available and they're just having a really simple version of a smartphone with only two gigabytes of, of, of storage? Uh. Well, you, you won't have to uh, provide a service to the network in this way if you just have a mobile phone. At least not now. I mean, we, we, um, 
we predict that in about eight to ten years, smartphones, maybe even sooner, like if if progress uh, really goes in this direction, then uh, mobile phones will be full participants in network as well. But by now, we rely on you know existing uh, PCs and laptops and things that are powerful enough to have you know the the bandwidth and storage capacity and processing capacity to yeah. be active contributors to to the network. Yeah. And uh, you also talked something about the, uh, your cryptocurrency. Can you say something more about that? So the, the cryptocurrency is um, integrated very innately into the attention economy model. And so if we return to, to this logic that we described about sending out messages, updates, posts to the network and trying to uh, increase your reputation, right? Um, this model also determines what sort of priority and, and reach any message that you send out gets. So I post I post some, some posts, like I, I talk about what I ate for breakfast, mm -hmm. and only like um, my 50 closest friends will see it, okay? And then maybe a couple of them will like it, maybe someone will leave a comment, but it's going to stay within this very close circle of friends. On the other hand, if I upload this uh, meme picture that's very funny and it gets many likes and it starts spreading around, um, then um, it, just because of the engagement that it gets, uh, it's going to um, going to increase the circle of, of networks that it reaches. Like it's going to penetrate to to Holland, it's going to to find its way to to other parts of the world, to other communities, and so on. But if you upload something, if you if you post something that's not immediately interesting. Right? Maybe you want your, uh, the picture of your breakfast to, to get a lot of recognition for, for whatever reason. Then you can invest the cryptocurrency that we issued, that we're calling the AMP, uh, that's uh, from Amplify. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's going to have the effect of increasing the spread of this message even though it did not get the same level of engagement with, uh, with the friends, with the, the immediate circle of friends who were exposed to it. And so this is essentially investing this coin, the AMP, for getting to your attention, for purchasing your attention. And because we're talking about a decentralized network where there's no intermediary for that, right? like the, the existing model on Facebook is that you pay Facebook for exposure to, to their users, right? Mm -hmm. But here we don't have a Facebook. So when I invest a token into a post, and it gets to you because because of this token, like you're not my, my immediate friend, or you're not even a friend of mine anymore uh, at all, then you will be compensated by a portion of the coin of the M that was invested into this post. Okay, so, you'll, uh, so, you, so you will share with the revenue, the virtual revenue, of uh, the cost that somebody makes to get the message with you, like an advertisement or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's more than just for advertisement side. I mean, maybe you, you wrote a political post and you wanted to get some more exposure, or maybe you, you have a party this weekend and you want to get some more for some more friends or some you know some more recognition for it. It's it's for everyone. It really levels the playing field in terms of um, of this mechanism of using um, monetary value. To, to increase your voice. Yeah. And it also makes it very clear and above board when, when this happens, right? I mean, if someone, uh, whether it's a company or a friend of yours, amplifies a message this way, then you'll see it. You'll see that this is paid for content, a paid for message. Yeah. And you'll be compensated because you were exposed to something that maybe otherwise you wouldn't be exposed to. And of course, because it's a completely decentralized network and, and you are the owner, right? You have full control and you can always turn off this type of messages from specific areas of the network, from, from companies, from, from anyone, right? You can just decide exactly what sort of messages you want to get and from, from whom. And <coughs> when you're a person, uh, uh, and, and, and what can people then do uh, with, uh, with AMP they are receiving because they are open for advertisement or for other mm -hmm. different kind of messages people want to share? Yeah, well, so, so they can of course amplify their own messages, but here we, um, here we also want to have this application ecosystem, right? So we have uh, Lively Gig that I mentioned, so you can start paying people with the funds that you receive just for participating on the network and, and giving out your attention to messages. You can start paying people for all types of services. Uh, or you can pay for a ride on a decentralized Uber, right? or you can purchase things on a decentralized marketplace. Another use, obviously, is that 
of that. Let, let me phrase it differently. Yeah, sure. If you, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to visit uh, San Francisco lately, but the amount of applications that um, rely on people providing all sorts of services to one another, it's, it's going in, in, in a way that's, that's maddening. Like you have an application for someone to go pick up food from the supermarket and from, uh, from you know, a fast food place and someone to do your laundry and someone to do this and that. And, <coughs> And, and they're all based on this centralized model, right? And so what, 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 we're, what we're looking for is to just allow anyone to provide any type of service to another person, to uh, agree on, on what we call a social contact. It's a type of smart contact that you can run on the network, and then compensate each other directly with this di digital currency without any entity taking a cut or you know, any type of fee from that or telling you what you can or can't do. Yeah. You know, all, all you and your peers on the network. Yeah, so, so what you're building uh, with, with, with Scenario uh, it is a basic infrastructure where other people can also build on their own things, like, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, what you say, okay, our free project will be what we're building ourselves, uh, it's a social network, but people can also build their decentralized Airbnb, Uber, exactly. uh, TaskRabbit, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. on the platform. Yeah. Or uh, uh, on this system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then they can all integrate directly into this unified feed that you get. Right? So you, you have your social feed, but then let's say a friend of yours sells something on the market, and you'll be able to see you know, the card from that in your feed because he's your friend, and you you may be interested in, in what he's doing. And so we the, the attention economy system learns how to prioritize information. To coming to you both from your social circle but from any application or any sort of service that you're interested in the decentralized network. Right. Cool. cool. And, and what do you think, uh, because there, there are still quite some old fashioned organizations who have no idea how to deal with this, uh, let's say for example tech services, mm -hmm. uh, because like uh, when I'm going to build a, 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 a uh, decentralized version of Uber, TaskRabbit and Airbnb uh, uh, on a platform and where everybody is doing business uh, through the platform Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and only uh, in the ecosystem, there are probably people from tech service say, hey, but now you're not, uh, you're not uh, paying with money, but with, mm -hmm. with A and B, so, so we want uh, to know something about it, we, we want to control it, or we want to cut off it. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think will happen then? Well, uh, first of all, um, amps are money. Like they have a monetary value that you can use just like any other type of currency. And actually, for people who want to collaborate and co cooperate with the tax uh, agencies, it's actually going to be easier because everything is documented in a very simple and, and uh, straightforward way on the blockchain. Right? So if you just want to, to provide a report of your earnings to, to any tax entity, then it's, it's very, very simple. Of course, on the other hand, if you want to have some sort of anonymous profile on the network and still offer services, then it's going to be harder for the tax services to go after you. Uh, but eventually, the, the type of economy that's being created on top of um, on, on top of decentralized systems like that, I think they're going to lead to um, to rethinking the type of taxes that, that we take from people, the type of uh, mechanisms that we use to collect tax, yeah. and, and, and you know the, the exact things that taxes can even be collected based on. Yeah. But it, it's going to be a while until we get there. Yeah, but I think yeah, this, this whole process will take a while, so, so they, can, they can also learn from that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what do you think, um, because uh, uh, in the end, and that's also why I'm also here in Tel Aviv, because many people they are talking about decentralization, about blockchain, or about, uh, uh, but in the end, uh, what I see, and, 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 and it's also something uh, I see in your story, that's the, 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 the examples, uh, I think system is brilliant, it's, it's really interesting in that. But we're also really interested in, okay, but how are you going to, to, uh, to make sure that the wider audience who isn't into decentralization and not uh, uh, technical will, will, will join this? Because uh, like talking with privacy, yeah. uh, everybody knows, okay, when you're not paying for the products, but still everybody's using it. And mm -hmm. in Europe, we have some concern uh, about privacy. When you say your privacy to somebody, is to, to somebody in the US, he or she says, privacy, come on, that's death. So, uh, so, 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 so everybody is, or people are not a little bit busy with privacy, but in the end, it won't stop them to, to use uh, systems uh, where the privacy is, uh, is being screwed. So, so uh, how uh, are you going to, to, to get people on board? 
So uh, that, that's a very good question and one that we've uh, we've put a lot of thought into. Because as you say, most people don't really care about privacy. They don't really care about the immediate benefits that a decentralized system can offer them. And and so uh, the uh, these people are not going to be the first crowd to to migrate and enjoy these these systems. For those people, for the, the, the masses at large, we'll have to provide very, very tangible benefits. And so there, there are a few things that we can offer right away, and a few things are, are relatively in, in the relative uh, short term, and a few that will only come uh, many years down the line, like uh, three, four, five years from now. So the, the, the basic and immediate thing that we could offer, uh, and I, I'm going to go back to the decentralized Uber example, is something very simple. If you're a driver, and uh, you want to give someone a ride, you have, uh, right now you mostly have Uber and Lyft, right? And if, if we have a decentralized version, then when the driver, um, you know, has the option of picking up someone from Uber, from Lyft, or from the decentralized version, he's going to see that the decentralized version offers him 20% more, uh, more of a compensation from the user, or let's say 10% and the user saves 10%, right? That's, that's a very, very, very clear and immediate benefit that you can have from not having a centralized entity that operates for profit on top of, on top of this network. Um, another, another good example is when we're talking about content creation and content distribution. So if I'm a musician, and right now I have to, for the most part, I have to have a label, I have to have distributors, and I have to wait a long time until I get the money from you know, anyone actually paying to stream or download yeah. my, my stuff. And of course, if I'm using Spotify or Apple Music and the like, I have to give them um, a very large cut. They also have all sorts of weird mechanisms determining exactly how, how I'm getting paid and when. And they also, I mean, and that's maybe the worst part, they have all sorts of draconian contracts and, and rules about how you, how you may interact with your fan base, that sort of information and insight you can get from the people who, who, who listen to you, who uh, actually uh, are your fans in your community. And so when we, when we offer those uh, direct access to their fans and generally a direct um, relationship with their community, it's a benefit that they can very clearly um, understand, both both uh, the, the musicians, both the content creators, and the fans. Now, on on the longer term, uh, what's going to happen are, are two major things. One, because we don't have a very strict business model like Facebook, where they essentially optimize the the amount of attention of yours that they can sell. And because of the very open source and modular nature of the platform. Uh, the user experience and user interface are going to evolve in a way that we can't even predict right now. Um, right? It's, it's foolish to assume that the best, best type of user interface for a social network is the one that Facebook created right now. Right? Because it's, it's geared in a very specific way towards the business goals. Right? And when you open this up and you, when you let, let anyone in the world start modifying it in, in, in so many ways, then people are going to find different ways to do this. Uh, ways that are just better for them in, 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 in many different ways. And I think eventually this, these types of networks are going to offer better experiences for people. Uh, yeah. Those that are focused on their benefits and not the benefit of, of this uh, cooperation. Um, the second and perhaps most important thing uh, in the long, longer term future is that I really think we're going to see some applications that we, we can't even conceive of right now because we're still, still mostly thinking from a centralized point of view. So just like when the internet was created, right, and, and at the beginning it felt a bit like an over-glorified um, chat or telephony program, right? We, we couldn't really imagine the types of applications that people would create. But uh, it takes a while for the tool to be there, for, for this new paradigm to start penetrating and permeating through people's minds, through the, um, through, you know, the collective consciousness, for people to, to have this trick of brilliance and, and think about an application that we could just never really manifest right now using the existing paradigm. And, and a few years from now, we're, we're just going to see all sorts of applications that we... we you know that that would bring immediate benefit to people, like right? the, the type that you can, you just um, 
want to immediately download to your phone or computer or whatever. And many people don't even know that they're decentralized, right? They, they would just accept the benefits that they give you as, as a given, right? They, they won't really question the paradigm. But, but there will be those that are created using the decentralized systems and, um, and that's just going to become sort of a norm, right? It's yeah. just going to be the way things are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, I wish that, but, but, but I think still the biggest challenge is because from where we are right now, that's clear. Uh, uh, what the possibilities are is also clear, but I'm still really interested in okay, but how are we going to close the gap or make the gap as short as possible? Mm -hmm. uh, this new technique uh, can get to its full potential or first with half a century, but yeah. it can, can start because, in the end, I, I really understand possibilities. I, I really understand where we are right now, but still, I'm really yeah, I, I interested in, 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 in this gap. Yeah, so, so actually, just, uh, just last week. Um, on the weekly hangout we have, every Wednesday we have this community hangout where we the developers and people working on Scenario um, chat with the community and uh, you know we, we report about developments and we, we ask the opinions of our members and we, we have the, exactly these, these types of discussions, how we get to the masses, what are the best applications, who would benefit from the technology the most. Yeah. And we and and um, and the last conversation was focused about getting to uh, the specific niches that can benefit the most from from this technology. So, for example, um, I brought up the example uh, that um, uh, one of our, one of our designers gave to me just a few days earlier about uh, a community called Massroots. The community with uh, six. 150,000 users, right? and they uh, talk about cannabis. <laughs> that's, that's what the community was created for, all things cannabis. So this is exactly the type of community that want to be able to engage each other. Uh, you know, not, not even because some of it may still be illegal, right? But just because they want, they're, they're a bit more concerned with privacy. They care more about their, their identity and exactly what they expose out to the network. Mm -hmm. And they want to have something that's, that's theirs, right? That's not dependent on the various rules and, and regulations and limits put down by the existing social networks. Yeah. And so th that's just one example. Yeah. And of course, we, we have the example of, of content creators that we discussed earlier, and all, all, all types, all sorts of other communities that we can offer immediate benefit to, whether it's privacy, or the very modular and extensible nature, or uh, uh, all sorts of collaboration tools that we already, um, that, that we want to have um, as very integrated parts of the network. And um, we, we just have to find those little niches, those little communities, and uh, we're thinking about um, actually building this this new giant out of widgets. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, uh, do you watch uh, There were two things uh, in my mind. First one is, I think you really have to focus on on on, on uh, in a niche uh, in uh, 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 providing solutions, uh, because in the end, people are are really weak for solutions. Like uh, my parents. Mm -hmm. They use Airbnb two years before I did, mm -hmm. not because it was sharing economy, but it was, but, 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 uh, because it, it was the best solution on the demand that they had. Uh, and I think that's really important. And also what you say was, uh, was really interesting about tapping into existing communities with shared values, because then you already have a community. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. They know already each other, they trust each other, and then you can make really fast steps. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, interesting. And then we can offer these communities the types of tools that they want, that they just can't find on existing yeah. networks. Yeah. Like we yeah. can really tailor the experience for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well I don't think you, you will limit, uh, like what you say uh, with Uber, uh, uh, in price, uh, mm -hmm. because people they are also trusting now uh, a brand, because they're really yeah. smart marketers, they're really smart marketers, mm -hmm. so, so they're trusting the brand, and when this Trust uh, when you have to pay for this trust, let's say ten percent extra. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't mind, uh, so I don't think they're really really weak for for for, for price. Uh, um, I think it's really also really important to build on uh, uh, your brand. Well, that that depends, you know, because even even if you consider the Airbnb example that you mentioned, like uh, just a few years ago, you wouldn't conceive of trusting someone to spend time in his house, right? I mean, who mm -hmm. knows what would happen? No, I just go to a hotel and pay fifty dollars extra a night. But now it's obvious. I mean, who goes to hotels anymore, right? Huh. You, you just find the, the nice apartment, the nice room in the Airbnb, and, and go there, and you, you, know, right? you don't really have a care in the world. Yeah. Because, of, because of the reputation systems, they have them. 
I mean, if someone gives you a negative experience, then it's very, very easy to see that in the exact page of the offering, right? In the, yeah. in the, in the same place. So that's, that's why you can trust it. You, you know that th this is a person who wants to, you know, make some money and he's bound to the system where if he treats his uh, visitors in a negative way, it's, it's going to be obvious to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah really interesting. Right. We, we, we really have to remember that uh, many of the things that we now take for granted just a few years ago were inconceivable. And it's all about creating the right tool for the purpose, right? I mean, you never change people's mind by, by giving them a new idea, right? We'll never convert people to this paradigm and say, oh, decentralized paradigms, they're, they're so good, you have privacy and you have this and that. No. You want to give them the tool where they see an immediate benefit in, and yeah. then they adopt it, and then they don't, just don't think about it again. They, yeah. they just use it. Yeah, yeah, cool. And uh, what about your own organization? Because uh, there, there are quite some people uh, working uh, uh, on building this, so, so you are spending much time on it. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at, at what way are you uh, paying your, your living? So, uh, so what's your own uh, business model? So we had um, a card sale of the AMP token, and that's the money that we've raised so far, um, and uh, the founders of the company still have some of those. They're currently being traded in uh, currency exchanges, so you can um, buy or sell them for, for Bitcoin or for other currencies. And <coughs> eventually, we are planning. We are planning on creating services uh, that we can generate revenue from. So we, we really want the basic network, the social network, or the social interactions, you know, being able to post and to uh, collaborate and to form groups and communities and so on. We want it to be as free as possible. We want it to be unconstrained by any sort of uh, uh, monetary uh, consideration. But on top of that, when you, uh, when you start providing all sorts of services, right, services that aren't, um, let's say, mandatory to your enjoyment of the social platform, but, but when you want to get some service on top of that, then we can start taking some fees or uh, generally create things that specifically are specifically meant to generate revenue. Yeah, and, and then you have to buy uh, the, 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 uh, the amps? Uh, well, that, that's, one, it, that's uh, one option, but it's not necessarily the case. I mean, uh, uh, you, you can, uh, when you create an application, you can create your own currency, of course, right? And you, it's, I mean, it's very open and there's no reason to prevent someone from paying someone else for any type of service with uh, Bitcoin or, or the like. The only thing that, did, that amps um, um, are the only coins you, you can use is when uh, we're talking about the, the role in the attention economy for promoting posts. Yeah, okay. And um, so uh, uh, what, uh, what are now your next steps? You say, okay, uh, in two months, uh, we're going to release the first version of the of the mm -hmm. of the of the of the platform, yeah. so people can already sub uh, subscribe our website uh, mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, so you can go to, to our website uh, on cinema.com and sign up to our newsletter. We have a few thousands of people already um, uh, on our newsletter on our mailing lists, and of course we'll notify you once uh, the platform is available. Uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is that alongside the first release, uh, sometime in February. Year, 2016, we're going to launch an equ equity card sale. So uh, last time, a few months ago this year, we sold uh, just, the, just the currency, just the amps. And on February, we're going to sell uh, some of the equity in the company. So uh, you'll be able to enjoy uh, future profits coming into, coming from the, the revenue generating applications that we create. And this is a this is a way for us to avoid having to sell equity to uh, you know established private investors who may want to have a board position and who may want to steer the company into uh, let's say more um, centrally um, uh, centrally driven uh, modes of thinking and let the public let the people who are passionate about this uh, this solution support us. Yeah. Right, and, and and still support us. Still supposed to support us while still, um, you know, getting some compensation for it in, in, in the form of equity in the company and the promise of future revenue. And so there, there's still a, a company behind a scenario. Yeah. And at what way uh, are you going to prevent in the future that this company uh, comes in the wrong hands and then will be again 
uh, the next Facebook. Well, then the best uh, defense that we have, or the, let's say we, we have a few defenses in place. First of all, the information is always in your hands. Like Scenario LTD, the company, it, just like any other entity, it, it has no key to your house. It has no way to get to your information. Right? We, we can't even, I mean, people can even start networks without us knowing about them. Right? We have no way of knowing who you are, what you're doing in the network, what you're uploading, right? especially if you don't want to, to, uh, to report that to us. And so that's one thing. Another thing is that it's all open source. Right? So if someone at, at some point decides that we're not doing our jobs, that we are not living up to the principles that we are talking about, that we've presented and, and committed to uh, for our community, then you can always, ju you can always just fork the network and do whatever you want with it. Like, we, we're, not, we're not really uh, holding you, like, we're not grabbing you in, in any way. You can always just leave, you can always just create your own network. Right? So everything we create is open source. Uh, everything is very, very easy to, to change if you want to. And, and so um, right now we're being relied on for creating these, these basic tools and the, the technology and making sure it all works fine. But in the future, there's nothing preventing anyone from creating their own networks, their own applications without having to rely on us. Yeah, so uh, also the value of, of Sneary LTD uh, won't be this enormous uh, like other centralized platforms are uh, right now. Well, we, we, we can't be, even if we, you know, even if we turned evil, <laughs> we, we couldn't be this way because the basic infrastructure is decentralized. We don't have and we will never have the type of control that Mark Zuckerberg or Eric Schmidt have over the centralized platform. Yeah. Okay, cool, interesting. And is there something more that you want uh, to add before we, uh, before we finish? Yeah, so uh, uh, I just want to add that I want to invite everyone in the ecosystem, anyone who wants to build a decentralized application or has any sort of distributed protocol in mind, to come and work with us. We really want to give you the benefits of, uh, of this system that we have that uh, is already very mature and is the product of uh, a design that took into account the decades of research and thinking that have gone into creating distributed system, uh, systems. It's really one of its kind. There's nothing right now in the market that has um, really the, the depth of thinking and of uh, the, the operability uh, that our system offers. And I'm talking about both in terms of uh, the underlying infrastructure that we have, the fully decentralized and distributed tech stack, where you can build any type of application on top of it, and um, the social stack that we're building right now, the platform that lets you use the reputation system and create an identity and so on. And a lot of our focus right now is in creating um, those uh, tools like APIs and uh, software developer kits for developers to use very easily so they can integrate into the platform, they can create their own applications. Right now though, uh, our partners, the few partners that we have, uh, do have to rely on us uh, to help them create these applications, but I still really invite anyone who wants to work with us, who's excited about the sort of thing that we do, to learn about the technology that we have. It's all on our site, it's all, all of the information is on our blog, and to come and contact us if you want to, to work with us or to create your own decentralized application. Okay, cool. Yeah, we really want everyone in the ecosystem to benefit from what we have to offer. And where can they subscribe or where, where can they reach you? So that's uh, scenario.com or they can message us at hello at scenario.com. It's, uh, it's probably written down below the video, but it's S Y N E R E O. Okay, that's clear. I will put it uh, on the yeah. video. Thanks. <laughs> so thanks for the interview. I'm uh, going to subscribe and uh, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I will be one of your launching uh, users. And uh, I also invite everybody who's watching now to do the same. And uh, good luck uh, with, uh, with your next steps. Thank you.